This is Jared from Commit Quality. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can handle random pop-ups and overlays in your Playwright C Sharp tests. I've already done a video on this with Playwright Node.js, and I thought, let's show it in the C Sharp.net version of Playwright. So before we get into anything, let's show you what we're actually going to be testing. So on CommitQuality.com practice, we have this pop-up module. If I click into here, and between one to six seconds, we'll have a random pop-up up appear here which is subscribe to commit quality and we have the close button as you can see as i'm clicking around the page nothing happens until you click close so we're going to show how we can deal with that random pop-up we don't know when or if it will appear but we want to add a locator handler so it doesn't block out tests and cause any problems this feature was added as part of version 1.42 of Playwright.net. Playwright so make sure if you're following along with this, you go to your NuGet package manager and you update Playwright to the latest version. I already, oh no, I don't. I thought I already had it up to date, but I don't. So let's install this to version 1.43. And that's all good now. If I go to installed, let's just double check. We've got version 1.43 installed. Of course, you only need version 1.42, but I suggest update into the latest while you're in here doing it anyway. So let's write some of the tests then. So I'm gonna show you a failing first. So let's say await page dot go to asynchronous and we wanna go to the random pop-up URL. So here we go. What I'm going to do then is because I know my code, this pop-up can appear anytime within one to six seconds. I'm actually going to add a delay in here. So we force the, the test to wait enough time for that pop-up to have appeared. Otherwise, we're not going to show you any value in the locator handler. So I'm adding a test.delay, which is just making the test wait for 6,000 milliseconds, which is six seconds. And then I'm going to say uh, await page dot get by test ID and we want to get one of the accordions so it'll be this one I think it's just accordion hyphen one but let's double check there we are yeah it was and we're going to say right let's click it so I'll say click async and tell you what I'll do I'm actually going to add a timeout because we don't want to wait the default timeout let's just say fail it after after two seconds so we want our timeout object. We know our object with timeout inside here, and we'll say 2000 milliseconds. So essentially it's saying, we'll click this, and because of the way player it works, it'll check if it's available to click and everything, but we're gonna say only wait two seconds, because that's enough to fail our test. If I just rebuild this, what we should see is a failure in the test. And the reason for that will be because We've got that 6,000 millisecond wait, which is going to mean that that pop-up has definitely appeared. And we're going to try and click the accordion, but we can't because that overlay is in the way. So let's hit run. See it's loaded here. Obviously, it's just waiting the six seconds. Now the overlay is there. It's trying to click this accordion, but it can't. And you should see, there we are, the test has failed. You can see it only waited the two seconds. But even if we had the normal timeout in here, or if we increased it, it's still not going to work. It's just going to wait longer. And I didn't want it. I didn't want the video to be so long just for the basic timeout. But you can see it's trying to get the locator and the locator but it can't click it because of that overlay. So this is where the add locator handler comes in. What we can say at the start of our test is basically we want to say set up the handler in case overlay appears. So what I'll do here is await page dot and as long as you've updated to version 1.42 or later, you will see this add locator handler async method. And in here is where we can see pass through the locator. And then we've got the actual handle of what to do if we see this locator. So in our case, we want to say if we see page get by text, and I think I'm going to copy it just in case I mistype the subscribe to commit quality, but we want to say if we see a locator with the text of subscribe to commit quality, then we want to do something. Say that's what we're looking for. And now, Let's say async, 
I've got a callback function there. And inside here is where we actually say what we want to do. So in our case, it's going to be a wait page dot. I think there's a test ID on the close button. Oh. Uh, is that a test ID? Yes, it is, which is called close pop-up. So what I can say is get by oh, get by test ID, close pop-up, and we say we want to click it as well. Let's add the semicolon here. So basically what we said is here's our handler that says if subscribe to commit quality appears at any point during this test, we want to click the close pop-up, which means now that after this task delay, we'll see the subscribe to commit, to commit quality, we'll click it, and then we'll also click the accordion and everything should work as expected. So let's run the test. And we should see it run in headed mode and it'll be green because it'll be working. So we're in that six second delay, so we're still in it, but once without come out of it, it clicked it, closed it, and there we are, the test is all green. If you just want to double check, what we can do is add the breakpoint here. Let's debug our test. So we're on it. See, subscribe to commit quality. If we open it back up, there we are, hit our breakpoint and you can see we're on the accordion, it's it's expanded and the pop-up has disappeared. And that's it. It's really useful if you have maybe adverts or something on your page, or you have something that might appear and then sometimes it doesn't, then you can use these handlers and it just makes life a lot easier. Put it at the start and then you haven't got to worry about it when it does actually appear and cause any problems with the tests. As always, if you do have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. I've also enabled super thanks on my videos, so if you do want to help contribute towards the running of my channel and the creation of these videos, then you can donate using that. As always, thanks for watching, have a good day.